Welcome back to Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl for Wealth Transformation. I'm Dr. Cheryl, and tonight we have a live show and live audience. And thank you very much for my crew, for Vita, Michael, Eric, Jim, and Brad, and all the staff here at Marin TV. Have you been practicing your mindful, unconditional love, being non-judgmental and non-critical towards yourself, your friends, and your family? Are you practicing this towards your health and your wealth? Well, changing mass consciousness is an individual responsibility, and that was by Dennis Weaver. I'd like to take a moment in silence for everyone affected by Hurricane Sandy on the East Coast, and especially New York. Thank you. We have a returning, very special guest today, Janice Niederhofer is with us again. Janice has quite a background. She is a retired special agent with the Drug Enforcement Administration, a forensic psychophysiologist, psycho, <laughs> that's quite a word, Master mentor, world-renowned interview and interrogator, to name a few of her talents. She is passionate about supporting people to be the best they can be. Welcome, ja Janice, thank and you. thank you so much for being here, and welcome back. Thank you for having me. Well, I think what we want to talk about tonight mm -hmm. is true connection and what that means. What's and it mean to you? Well, true connection. Well, there's different ways of connecting, but really for me, the most important is through the heart. Mm. And I, I, I believe in what I've experienced in my life is most people, a lot of people, they put a shield around their feelings because they don't want to be hurt. And if we, if we as a global community could talk about our feelings openly, you know, in the appropriate time and place, I think we would have healthier relationships. Um, and maybe you have something that you can say with that. Sure. You know, my line of work, we wore a bulletproof vest, right, for most of our work, because it kept us alive. Now, that bulletproof vest was very heavy, but it served a purpose. And it also indicated to whoever, whoever we were going in to arrest or execute a search arrest warrant that we were there for a certain reason, right? But that bulletproof vest, I love to talk to men and women behind the badge because people forget that they're people too. When you, most people who run into law enforcement of any type, it's usually a negative experience, right? Traffic ticket, robbery, domestic abuse, whatever. And so are you saying that the people, the people think negative about an enforcing agent or policeman or whatever? Well, typically, right? Yeah, yeah. But I want people to know that there's a metaphor in here too. But first I want people to know that the people, the men and women behind the badge who choose to serve, whether it's the military or law enforcement, they made a choice to serve. And they yeah. serve the ultimate. And the ultimate sacrifice, of course, as we all know, is life and death. I'm very blessed and lucky to make it the other side of almost 30 years with all my limbs and no injuries, right? No yeah, absolutely. substantial I mean, injuries. How did you do that? Yeah, smart. I was very smart and I was very tough, right? And you must have run fast or you must have acted fast. Yeah, but more so, here's the deal. I connected with people. So no matter who I came in contact with, I don't care if it was a homeless to a CEO of a mm -hmm. company, it did mm -hmm. not matter. Mm -hmm. To me, they were a human being. So how did you do that? Especially being in such a, a dramatic or traumatic or whatever you want to call it, how did you actually do that? Well, I've been through a lot in my life, and so that gives you an itch. And mm -hmm. I love people. And I've seen people, I've seen the worst of people and the best of people. And I never give up on anybody. Yeah, right? I love the underdog. And people say, oh, he'll never change. You know, you're never, never change. He's in jail, la, da, da. Well, if you have that kind of an attitude, you know. Right, but, it's... But, but people are really coming from their frame. I yeah. believe in everyone. Yeah. Absolutely. Unless they have a chemical imbalance or something like that where you can't do anything about it. Yeah. But if people they can't people. do anything with medication or whatever. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So to answer your question directly, what made me effective 
was I would love people. Even in my very intimidating black ninja outfit, you know, with... So you came in with no judgment. Right. And really, to the best of your capability, unconditional love. Right, but I didn't call it that then. No. Yeah. I was just being that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what, what was really great, I was gifted that because I never had that. So I was giving it myself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because when you give it, you do receive it. Right. So to tie this piece in, connection is everything. And that's how it got me to, into everything that I'm in, like forensic psychophysiology. Wow, big word, right? Uh, master mentor, wow. All, all of that, if you look behind it, is connection. Yeah. Really connecting. And here's my, can I give you my secret recipe? Please, to our guests, yes. My secret recipe is this. Instead of judging people, you're going to judge people because you're human, right? You just go, oh, you're too fat, too small, too, sm you know, too smart, too dumb, whatever. But you get curious. Get curious about people. Well, then you, you, it's the layers. You know, we all have the layers in, in, for which we are evolving, actually. So it's, getting, it's penetrating the layers. When you really can get to know somebody, you see the layers and layers and layers. And, and they, the more they feel comfortable, the more I feel comfortable, the more I, un, you know, relax, unlax, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and, and you can show your true self. And that is the key of what I'm talking about with unconditional love, is being able to come from your true self, your true absolute self. Because when you come from your true, authentic, real, honest self, you can talk to anybody and you can be in any situation we had one tonight, you know, that you can get through it. And you still have that groundedness, that unconditional love. Okay, may I ask you a question? Of course. How do people find that? Well, that's kind of a loaded answer. <laughs> um, how do people find that? Well, I think it takes true introspection. You need to be able to look at who you are and how you behave and how you handle things you know how you react how you communicate you know for me communication is so i mean it's the, it's a key to everything if you can learn how to communicate from your true loving self you can you can talk to anybody even when it, when you're in the worst horrible feeling and you're angry of course when i if i get angry i usually pull myself back and I let go of the anger. I work, I just, I have to let go of it because I want to come with love. I don't want to come with anger. And, and that isn't always easy, especially with family. And I have my daughter here tonight, so she knows that. But it, it's, you know, it, it takes true loving yourself, purely loving yourself to be able to come from that and be able to, to do that. And then you can talk through anything when you get in a relationship with anybody. You know, I mean, that's the key, communication, unconditional love, and the key is the communication part. But how you get that, it takes practice. And you got, you know, it's like I tell everybody, write it, I love myself unconditionally on your mirror, anywhere you can see it. So you get it in, in your subconscious mind, and then it'll, it'll penetrate into your heart. And it takes practice, writing, whatever, but it just takes, it takes concentration. It takes, it takes, you know, discipline, whatever you want to call it, but just keep feeding yourself that unconditional love. You know, whether it's, it's going to the beach and, and communing with, with nature, you know, it, it's whatever, you know, listening to music. Sometimes some music just puts me in a place where I feel there's total unconditional love. So it's whatever works for you, but to keep feeding yourself that, that warm and fuzzy, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. but just keep feeding yourself in every moment, especially when you're going through a crisis. Um, May I add something? Of course. <laughs> you're good at that. For me, for me, yeah, I just wait here to talk, right? <laughs> no, you had so many great points, and if I could segue and expand some, because uh, what I know is different models of the world is more brilliant than one mind, one mind right? So yes. that's why I'm a member of several mastermind teams, right? Absolutely. So here's the deal. People are in a lot of pain nowadays. Mm. 
Great so time. let's let's yeah. take an example. Let's say a young kid. This is a true story. There's a young kid I know. He's only 20 years old. He's been in and out of prison many times. Okay. Mm -hmm. He grew up in a interesting environment. They fed him sugar since he was a little kid, right? And the mom gave him anything the kid the kid wanted. So his nutrition is off. His discipline is off. He got anything he wanted. He always mm -hmm. got yes. He never got a no. Mm -hmm. So no healthy boundaries. So gang member, heroin. They almost lost him. You know how the story goes. So everybody wants to give up on this kid. The best mm -hmm. place for him is jail. Mm -hmm. You know what I say to that? It takes one person to care about that young man and show him a different way. Because here's the deal. People don't know what they don't know. He only knows what he knows. Yeah, and all he knows is he's unhappy. Mm -hmm. So why is he acting out? Because he's severely unhappy. So it takes one person, a mentor, mm -hmm. one person. Or somebody maybe, that really cares. Exactly that mm -hmm. won't give up on him and believes in him and guides him because mm -hmm. he can turn around. It takes a choice. So people nowadays are in a lot of pain. Yes, okay? more than we know, actually. Right. I mean, that's why there's so much. I mean, everything is in upheaval around the planet and in the Mideast, especially. Yeah. But there's also yeah. greatness in the planet, yes. right? Yes. Lots. Yes. And everything's happening for a reason, right? This is a transformational time. Mm -hmm. So what I know is you never stop growing. You got to take responsibility for who you are. If you're not happy, find a way to be happy. Now that doesn't mean getting a new job, getting a new relation. No, it means going internal Absolutely. and healing all those wounds. How do yeah. you do that? It can be a choice. It can be a seminar. It can be a book. It can be a, it can be anything. But right. you've got to choose to change. Yeah, and and that's that is a choice we all have, whether we realize it or not. We have the choice to love ourselves unconditionally. And I know I say that so many times, but it's so important. It's important, but here's the deal. This lady said to me a couple weeks ago, she goes, you know, I speak to women all the time, and they talk about unconditional love. Love yourself unconditionally. She says, she says well, say that to people, but they have no idea what it is or how to do how it. To what do is it. that? Yeah. So what is unconditional love? You know, we talked about this once before, mm -hmm. and, you know, unconditional love is not criticizing yourself. You know, our mm -hmm. society, you know, is so material and physical that it is, I, th I think, made a lot of people neurotic about the way they look, the way they speak, etc. And, and, you know, stop judging yourself because then you can stop judging others and stop, you know, the, the critical, you know, being that critical. I, but how do you stop? Well, you have to... You know, you have to catch yourself. It's like this is very important to be very mindful. And it starts, it starts in here because our di dialogue goes, our monologue dialogue goes in our head. And it's, you, we have to stop ourselves. I know when, I, uh, when my daughter was a baby, I, and I wanted to set an example for her to be healthy, is I, I remember I'd start thinking negative thoughts. And I absolutely, one time I just said, stop. I, I screamed it out because I don't want to think negative thoughts. And, and you can't afford to think negative thoughts because it affects how you treat yourself and it also it affects how you treat others. Mm -hmm. And so, the, you know, stop the negativity and you, and you just have to be mindful. You have to think, you have to listen. I always say take inventory of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Take inventory because then when you're aware of it, you can stop it. You can, you can, you know, nip it in the bud. And then when it comes up again, you know, and it gets easier and easier and easier, the more you become more cognizant, you know, realize what you're thinking. Being aware. Being aware, awareness, you know, then you can, you can, you can change that pattern because we get in these, these patterns, these stuck patterns. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's not serving you and it's not serving the people around you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, that's how you start to change that. And I, I believe that when you, when you can change your thoughts, you can, your feelings, they, they amplify it. You know, we have control over our feelings. I believe we really do. Um, whether you like it or not, sometimes feelings are not comfortable, but then you can, you know, you can feel and think through it, which I know is one of the, the most challenging things is to have the balance between the, the heart and the mind. 
but you can do it. But it just takes concentration. So we need to stop every day. Everybody needs to spend time with themselves, either meditating, praying, whatever you want to do. But that's the time that you need to spend with your t yourself so you can be healthy. You mm. know, change these patterns that are not healthy. But you gotta, you got to do it. No one else can do it for you. Mm. We have to do it for ourselves. May I have your permission to share how of I see this topic? Yes. Everything you're saying is right on. And I also know that's what's causing people's thought pattern. 98% of everything you're thinking is on the unconscious level. I, call, I like to call it the critter brain. It just kind of drives your little race yep. car. You don't even know what's happening. Yep. Right? So when people take action, whatever your mind is thinking, let's say, um, I'm too overweight, let's say, right? So you're beating yourself up, and yep. all those chattering monkeys are going at it, right? Yep, yep. Okay, so how do you stop the chattering monkeys? You take action. Take, take action, because you, when you take action, action puts out the fear, the fire fit, of fear. fear. Yeah, yeah. Right? Absolutely. So take action, and it quiets those chattering monkeys. That's right. Because your unconscious brain is driving you. So when you say to, you know, um, work on your conscious language, that's right. a must. Oh, oh, absolutely. And you have to, to get it to your subconscious right. or your unconscious mind. And you have to work deeper. It's a constant yeah. growth. You never stop growing. No. And I don't want to ever stop growing. No. Never. And do you know you have three thinking brains? Your mind, your heart, and your, ch and your gut. Yeah. So when yeah. you have all three of those brains aligned, oh. life is grand. You know, it, too, I know, like, for myself, like, sometimes I'll, I'll when I feel uncomfortable, my stomach talks to me, tells me, does this feel comfortable? And my stomach tells me, and I, okay, now I need to shift either the thoughts or I need to pull myself away from the situation or whatever. You're right, though. Did you ever go against that stomach and you regretted it? You made a mistake because you went, well, your probably, you, I'm sure I have. It's called I know, the gut sure. feeling, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, and it's true to its... Stick with your gut Yeah. because your gut is telling you what's right for you. Yeah. And, and some people say intuition, you know, and trusting it, trusting mm -hmm. it. That's been, that's been an interesting process for myself, is trusting my intuition, which I'm getting much better at. It. <laughs> After when you've been, been uh, go through so many challenges, you have to listen to it. Oh my goodness, I wonder if maybe we should ask the audience if they have any questions. Oh, I'd love that. Um, we have some very interesting guests out here. To this evening, and um, would anybody like to ask any questions before we uh, we have a short time? And, a, and thank you for everybody for watching us. Uh, this is the first live that we've done with Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl, and I'm proud to have everybody here and grateful for this station. Anybody want to be brave out there? Oh, come on! Somebody's got to be brave. I just want to pose a question: I'm, Doesn't anger have its place? Um, because people need to know where you stand. And if you force yourself to mask anger so they don't understand and only come from a place of, of unconditional love, which I agree with, but people need to know when they've upset you. Otherwise, they walk all over you. And, you know, like you said, healthy boundaries. Can I take this one? Well, I have something to say, too. Okay. If we both can. I don't think we'll say the same thing because we come from, you know, like I had an experience this evening that um, really made me angry. But I thought, you know, okay, I've got to let go of this. I'm angry. I know it. I acknowledge it. But I want to communicate in the best effective way that I can. And I want to use it in diplomacy. So I had to pull myself away for probably five, ten minutes. And I thought, okay, how am I, and I thought through, my, through, through this process, I thought, okay, how am I going to communicate this? However, when I communicated, I said it wasn't appropriate what happened. You know, I, but I didn't want to do it from an emotional angry part. I did it more from a mental. So I could communicate, I did communicate my feelings, but I didn't come off rageous or, you know, and to me, when you come off like a rage, you turn the other person off. You don't like to be yelled at. I don't like to be yelled at. So it's, it's, it's the delivery. It's the how you communicate it. Hmm. Thank you for your question. It's really a profound one. What's your name, sir? My name is Chris. Chris. Chris, Thank you. anger. 
uh, serves a purpose, but serves a purpose with you. So use it for your benefit. If you're angry about something, track it back. What is that? What caused that anger? So what am I missing? Do I not feel important right now? Did I not? Um, did I not get my love right now? Do I not have security or certainty? Track the anger back right away because here's a secret, and this is a hard one for me to have learned and owned and applied in my life. No one can make you feel any way. You're in charge of your emotions. People can affect you if you let them affect you. So this is a tough one because you can get angry and get sad and get ha all kinds of emotions and you're depending on other people for those emotions. But when the buck stops here, I'm in control of my emotions. So if you get angry, use it to your benefit to fuel you for a result, a change or whatever, right? Whether it's with yourself first and then the other person or group or whatever. And just know, nobody can tr control my emotion. I catch myself right away, okay? When, one thing that I know uh, that I do uh, not very often, but if I get so angry that I'm like I can feel it throughout my body, I'll take a tennis racket or something and I'll I'll hit the bed because I want to get it out of my body. That's what I have done in the past. I mean, if something really has to make me angry in order to do that, but I want to be able to communicate my anger in a healthy way. So, uh, does that answer your question, Chris? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I agree completely. <laughs> I just I just believe that, you know, I, in acknowledging our emotions. Yes. You know, and I do believe that in every morning we choose. What kind of day are you going to have? Do you, you make the decision. Yes. Yes, right? in every moment. And, and, has your day ever changed and you got to adjust? No, I already chose. I woke up, I chose. It's going to be a great day. Sweet. And <laughs> I love it. And, you know, it's our responsibility for to ourselves to have that kind of an attitude. Fair enough. Thank Lori, you, I think I think Lori, you had a question. Hi, hi, Janice. This is Lori. In your work with many challenging situations, was there a time when you really felt connected in a way that you were surprised? A, a feeling of connection to all of humanity, a connection on a deep level that you surprised you. It wasn't a surprise. Great question. It wasn't a surprise because for most of my career. I was totally in service and I sacrificed every category of my life, my health, my wealth, my relationships because I served. And literally, I thought I was chosen to serve because I had to protect the world. And I used to look at normal people, I used to say, oh, I've got to protect you all and I have to do this. And no matter how it took its toll, I still served. Does that make sense? So finally, you know, we all hit bottom one time or another, and I had to realize I need to serve differently, right? And I almost quit my line of work because I didn't think I could put handcuffs on people anymore, right? I just wanted to love them. You know? But then I realized, listen here, I can do my job and do it differently. And I can be fulfilled and happy at the same time. And some people have to go to jail for a little while mm -hmm. because we have to keep people safe and we have to keep them safe from themselves. So once I made that adjustment, then I, I really got into the human behavior side of the house, the psychological side of the house, how to really get into people's worlds and transform them. So when I was interviewing, interrogating a criminal, I would change your life at the same time, right? So it's very interesting, and that's a great question. We could talk for hours about that one alone. Thank you for asking it. <laughs> Is there anyone else that would like to speak up? on this topic. Well, to get back to our conversation, um, connection, true connection. Um, is there anything else that you want to talk about in detail? True connection. The meaning for me is being all that you can be in any moment in time because you never know who you can influence. That's good. I really like that. Right? That's very true. And really connect with people. You just don't know. Get beyond the cover of the book. You don't know who you're speaking to. And you, you don't know what they've been through. That's what I was just going to say. You the, don't know their journey. You don't yeah. know their pain. You don't know what they can share. You don't pay attention to people. Get out of your own way and make it about the other person. Absolutely. And that that is, I think, a very profound thing. And we don't do it enough. And you know, we spoke earlier that life is precious. 
Yes. We go about Every our day. Moment. Anything can happen. Anything. And your life can change in a second. Mm -hmm. So appreciate every moment. Connect with strangers and relatives and friends and business partners. Connect. Really connect. Take that extra split second to really, you know, appreciate somebody. And I, and I think, too, like when I think of that, I think of my family. And it's really important to forgive. Oh, that's a... You know, I mean, it's yeah. a huge thing, forgiveness. And, you know, I have exercises that I've done that I share with people. Mm. And, and it's, you know, you have to give, forgive yourself. That's the hardest one for me is forgiving myself. And for most people don't even think about forgiving themselves. They but, think about trying to forgive everybody else first. Yeah, but if you don't forgive yourself, how can you really forgive somebody else? But most people don't know that, so I'm glad you're talking about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, 70 times 7, you know, you got you to gotta forgive yourself first. Mm. And then when you can do that on a core level, I'm talking about a core yeah. level, then you can be free. You know, all this that we're talking about is being free. And I think we all want to be free. Don't you think that everybody really wants to be free? And what does that mean? <laughs> free from the shackles of, of uh, bondage to things, to emotion, negative emotions. That's what I'm saying. And, oh my goodness, we're coming to the end here. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I... <gasps> Oh, well, our tip for the day is stay out of debt, pay off your credit cards, practice delayed gratification. In other words, don't buy impulsively and save for the quality things you want to buy. It may, it may take longer, but it will be worth it in the end. So start today by putting, to get, putting together a budget that is realistic and applicable to your income. I will leave you with this. Remember, happiness doesn't depend on who you are or what you have. It depends solely on what you think. And that's by Dale Carnaby, Car Carnegie. Be charitable before wealth makes you covetous by Thomas Brown. We are, only in, we are the only industri industrialized country in the world that does not have national health insurance. We are the richest in wealth and the poorest in health of all industrial nations. And that's by Studs Terkel. It is wrong to assume that men are immense, with immense wealth are always happy. And that was by John Rockefeller. Nonviolence leads to the highest ethics, which is the goal of our evolution until we stop harming all other beings. We are still savages. And think, think and be happy and be grateful and eat healthy. And thank you for watching and being part of our show. And thank you very much, Janice. It's my pleasure. And thank you, all our guests. <laughs>